War of the Visions is getting a pretty crazy schedule in the next couple weeks. We'll have Lara Croft, then Elena as a surprise character, and then all the Winter units are getting their EX jobs. Uh, now quickly, I don't think any of those EX Winter units are worth going for if you don't already have the unit. Uh, there's so much good stuff to go for that pulling for these seems like a little bit of a waste. Uh, they will probably be back in Winter in three months if you miss them right now, so it's no big deal. And then mainly, when they were released in JP with their EX job, uh, it was in the beginning of the EX era, but now it's been months. Uh, Cloud, Tifa, there's been so many good units that are much more competitive than the winter ones that have been released, uh, that they're just a little too late. If you do already own them though and uh, want to EX them, I think it's very worth it. They are very good, especially Victora. And so what we're doing today is we're taking a re doing a review, we're reviewing stats, abilities, builds, where they all shine, where they won't. Uh, but my general advice is, you already got them, go for the EX. You don't have them, please don't pull. Uh, I think you'll be spending too much viz on something that you won't be able to use all that often. So let's begin with Victor's review, and then I'll be working on the other videos afterwards. Uh, this one is a long-range debuffer. She's got a very interesting kit, including a barrage that decreases offensive stats. Uh, she has 60 defense penetration very easily without buffs, and then with buffs can get to 100 and completely ignore defense, which is very interesting. Uh, she has decent physical bulk, uh, no matter the sub job you're equipping, so that's pretty interesting. And then uh, she will be a natural partner for Lara Croft or at least use the vision card that we'll be getting for free very well because it's a water missile oriented vision card. Uh, something I really like Winter Victora for is manual play. Uh, she has move 3, jump 2, which makes her rather mobile around the map. And then she's got long range and debuff, so it's really easy to use her to outmaneuver the enemy team, uh, which I generally think is a very fun way to play. Looking at her stats, I would say she's somewhere between Barrett and Frederica. She doesn't have the HP that Barrett has, uh, but she can have really good defensive abilities, and uh, she can generate barriers, which makes her rather tanky versus physical threats. Uh, she is a little bit slower than what Frederica is, but has a little bit more attack, slightly shorter range, but slightly higher damage. So overall, she's a really good long-range attacker that can somewhat survive a punch or two, so you could put her in the front line if you need to. I like the fact that she has the Paladin sub job, which gives her the option to draw hate if you need it, or to chain with slash attackers, so she's a natural partner for Titus if you already have him built. If I was just looking at the stats, I would say she works fine at 115. She doesn't lose out on too much HP or attack or any other important stat. Uh, but the thing is, her 120 ability really makes the character, and I think without that, she will never compete. So if you want to build her, you have to go all the way to 120. Looking at the actual upgrade, uh, the first ability she gets upgraded is Long Range, which moves from range up 1 to range up 2. With range up 2 in her passives, she is 1 away from the top tier range uh, characters. So they have range up 3 in their passives, that's Frerika, Nivlu, Korbal. Uh, she's not too far behind. Then her second upgrade is the Slow Arrow that reduces movement, and it now has plus 1 range. Uh, that would be good, but the fact is her longest range ability is actually her break spread that we'll see down there, which is a barrage type ability. Uh, so I don't think you'll be using the extra range from Slow Arrow all that often. It could be good though, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, she gets a upgraded barrage, which has the same range, same um, AoE pattern, costs 3 less AP than what barrage does, and decreases attack and magic. This is crazy, and that's the whole reason this character is so good. With that, she can now break barriers, dispel, uh, slow movement, slow agility, all from long range from very safe in the back, uh, which makes her a very versatile support for any kind of team, really. Here's a build that I think is kind of the typical way to build her. You would either go Paladin or Dual Gunner to increase your defense or generate some barriers. And then she's got 5600 HP, which isn't all that high, but with 37 defense and physical barriers, or 50 plus defense, she is decently uh, surviving. Uh, magic though, don't fight that. <laughs> she oh, doesn't have a lot of spirit, doesn't have magical barriers, so she might go down in one hit, uh, which is pretty bad for a character that's meant to be bulky. Uh, she does have 60 plus defense penetration pre-buffs, which is really fun, and then 95 agility without the use of the Black Rose Vision card or any other agility up VC, which is pretty fun. I think she's a great partner for evasion teams, so if you want to pair her with Tifa or Tobi, she'll do well, and the main reason for that is she has a limit burst that's basically guaranteed to 
blind with 67% base chance in an AoE. So you could use that to make sure that your uh, evasion units really can't get hit by the enemy team. And then it's going to be super hard for the enemy team to get to Victora because she's way in the back and they have to deal with your evasion units in the meantime. Otherwise, she's a great partner for water teams in general because she can potentially build chains, uh, start fights, or finish off enemies. And the fact that she breaks barriers is very interesting. I think she'll be especially good with like Summer Elsirel and Titus fighting physical teams because all three of your characters will be very hard to kill and they'll kind of enable each other with their abilities and chains. So that would be a team I could see being very competitive, uh, especially in Arena where you can pick your enemies. Uh, then, I mean, avoid Cloud. He has 60% defense penetration, so he doesn't care about that. Uh, he has three hit attacks, which I guess go through your barrier in a single ability, or I can just use Ascension, break the barrier, and then one shot you through that. Uh, yeah, Winter Victor will hit Cloud first because she has better range, but the second he comes in, he will murder her. Uh, then she'll also lose against Frederica, especially because the. Um, Frederica's Dream Vision card gives missile resistance. So on one end, Frederica is very resistant to what Victora can do, and then on the other end, Victora just has elemental disadvantage. Not a great matchup. And then finally, avoid fighting enemies with a lot of sustain, like Yuna. Uh, Victora does not have the damage to one-shot enemy teams. She's more of a character that will maintain an advantage while slowly whittling them down. And so if they have a lot of sustain, they can heal back the damage she does. Especially somebody like Yuna, the second she procs Aeon Bond goes back to full HP. So it's definitely not a great matchup. So my overall verdict is she's a very fun offensive support. She can be bulky, but she's mainly got a great kit for manual. Like she's a good unit in other game modes, but that's really where she'll shine. And I know that's not the most popular game mode out there. Uh, she also suffers from really poor timing and her kit will compete with Lara Croft because they're both water missile units. So unless you want to invest a lot of Viz to have two of those, uh, you might want to diversify your account a little bit more. I do think they will be great partners though, and they will use the same kind of vision card. So if you want to make a team with both. It is going to be very strong. Uh, if I was to give it a rating by game mode, I would say PvE a solid 7 out of 10 in a challenge where you need to use water units uh, because of all the utility she has. Like she can decrease the enemy team's offensive power, break barriers, dispel buffs, reduce their movement. There's a lot she can do and in a pinch you can use her as your tank by generating hate and putting barriers on her. So she can fill so many roles that I would rate her rather highly in that game mode. Arena, pretty good. You can make sure that you fight uh, physical enemy teams and then you have have a very bulky attacker with a solid kit. Uh, guild battle, there's often hybrid teams and it's really hard to find a team that doesn't have a sneaky Black Witch Helena, uh, so I don't think she'll be competitive because she will get one shot by Tenebral Rose or whatever Helena decides to throw Victora's way. Uh, manual PvP, I spoke about it a couple times, but the high mobility uh, with all the utility in her kit makes her a very competitive unit and uh, yeah, you might see me run her a couple times because she just seems very very fun to use. In auto PvP though, if you're trying to do your class matches uh, in Odo, uh, yeah, you might end up fighting an enemy mage team, she'll run in and die, so not as good. I would only give her a 7 out of 10 for that. My personal plan is to build her. I've had these winter units in the barracks for basically until barracks started giving shards, and so I have more than 250 of her mind spheres already. I will go all the way whenever I get the blossoms. Right now my blossoms stash is at a big old zero, so it might take me a short while, but the second I have them, she is my first winter unit I want to EX, so that's what's gonna happen on my side. Uh, hopefully you guys found it interesting and it gave you a couple of ideas on whether she's a good investment or not for you. Uh, if it did, please like and subscribe, and then as per usual guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.